Welcome. Last time we have looked at some groups and this made me think about a problem which I pondered for quite a while. In 2015 I looked at the barycentric refinement of graphs and operators. What happens with operators when you apply the barycentric refinement like the Kirchhoff operator, the, the Laplacian or the Hodge Laplacian, it doesn't really matter. But uh, a little bit surprising was that it doesn't really matter with what graph you start. The only thing which matters is the maximal dimension, the maximal size of a click. Uh, so I call this the barycentric central limit theorem. It's a very basic result, like the central th limit theorem in, in probability theory. And actually the most natural thing you can do is you take the eigenvalues and you, you scale them so that the, the lowest eigenvalue is zero, the, the highest eigenvalue is one. And then you look what happens with the spectrum if you if you make the barycentric refinement. And uh, I looked at uh, two-dimensional cases first. So what happened is this is the picture you see. So there is a kind of an interesting uh, case and it really doesn't matter whether you start with a two-dimensional sphere or two-dimensional donut or whatever topology would have expected that this really depends on the on the on the on the topology but it doesn't and uh, in the one-dimensional case it's already quite interesting actually almost you know too simple but you have a you have a uh, you can you can you can for example take circular graphs and uh, the eigenvalues caused by the gluing the gluing is a lower dimensional thing which is exponentially smaller as it grows exponentially smaller what happens is that uh, uh, in the limit you have a you have a you have a pretty ex, you have an explicit uh, explicit density of states which uh, happens to be related to the if you look at the the real density of states the inverse of the this is the integrated density of states and you take the inverse of f and the measure the corresponding measure the derivative that's a law and so that that, that converges in law so what you have is this law is actually the equilibrium measure on on the Julia set of the map uh, of the logistic map which is uh, x times 4 minus x so it's everything very uh, explicit you can write down everything explicitly you can write down the eigenvalues explicitly say in a circular case but really interesting it becomes when you look at the two-dimensional if you look at the two-dimensional case already and then you see these gaps so if you turn it around you get the integrated density of states this corresponds to gaps in the spectrum of the of the of the Laplace here. So uh, I, I was working on random Schrodinger operators also and uh, what happens it's uh, you have this Kotani theory which tells you that the integrated density of states exists if you take a larger and larger limit but it, it depends on the model it depends on the lattice and everything here it doesn't depend on the model it doesn't depend on the lattice and the reason is this exponential growth of the uh, of the of the simplices when you do barycentric refinement. So in this case, you start with a you start with a triangle. You do the barycentric refinement, and what you get is a, you get a refined thing. And then you do the barycentric refinement again, and you get you get finer and finer. Maybe I just show you some pictures of uh, show you some pictures of a barycentric refined graphs. So you take an octahedron barycentrically refine it or take an icosahedron they, they barycentrically refine it and you look at the you look at the limit and what you look when you look at the eigenvalues of the, it doesn't matter what I what what's what the operator you take <coughs> what you see is a universality so the spectrum converges uh, <coughs> of course it depends on the operator what kind of spectrum you this is for the Kirchhoff Laplacian for the zero dimensional la part of the Hodge Laplacian if you take the Hodge Laplacian it looks a little bit uh, in, in the one dimensional case it looks the same in two dimensions already looks different <clears throat> but it it uh, it is still universal so and uh, this has been uh, as far as i know the first time experimentally seen uh, in a paper i call the pekene papete paper it's a paper written by six authors and i mentioned this already in a in some slides from 2015 i have some so this is, this is uh, also one slide from 2015. There's a, a YouTube uh, kind of presentation where I already talked about this a little bit. But uh, what happens is in the 
uh, we would like to understand what is this uh, spectrum, is it a spectrum of an operator and what is that operator? And uh, I uh, think now that there is a way to actually get this, especially when looking at work of like uh, Grigor Chuk and, and others who have, uh, who have worked on kind of, uh, kind of the interface between almost periodic operators or operators defined by groups. It is very likely that there is a, a nice operator which one can uh, do. And the reason why I think so is because that's kind of what I did in my thesis, looked at the von Neumann Kakutani story, uh, renormalization, which is, which is pretty nice. So when you're looking at the two to one integral extension of a, so you take a, you take a dynamical system and you, you just double it and you take your map, <coughs> your map is the identity here and the, the map t goes back that's a renormalization which has a limit and this is the this is the uh, when you, and this is the Lebesgue space which you have this is actually the graph of this limiting transformation this is the adding machine in the dyadic group of integers and uh, so th that's something i was very familiar with because it appeared uh, in my uh, thesis and uh, what happens is there uh, that uh, you can you can see this this uh, density of states as an operator for Laplacian. So that's a very very exciting thing. So almost periodicity is very very natural. You have a compact topological group. You have some generators. So you you have uh, a subgroup, general non-abelian, and then you have uh, you have uh, you can write down operators and you can look at the spectrum of these operators. So that's kind of just very close to what we just did uh, last time in this Krasitki and uh, Grigorchuk uh, story. But let me just let me just see how you can actually understand this uh, von Neumann Kakutani system in this framework. So what we do is like in the case of the, the Grigorchuk group, you know, the Grigorchuk group has had four generators in the automorphism group of this uh, rooted tree this rooted Cayley graph, at the root you have only degree two and otherwise all the degrees are three and there are no closed loops. So that's called a rooted, uh, rooted beta lattice. And what, uh, what Grigor Schuch has, he has four, four generators there on this, on, this, uh, on this tree and this generates a group, the Grigor Schuch group, which uh, has this uh, intermediate growth rate between the exponential growth and po polynomial growth. So what is interesting is that you can actually see this uh, von Neumann Kakutani system as kind of just a, a very kind of the first example you can write down here. Take the automorphism of this tree, which is going, which is just flipping the two branches, and on one of the branches considers the branch a tree and does again the same transformation. So it's a recursive definition, and of course this because it has one generator, this is an abelian group. And uh, uh, actually, because it is the adding machine, it's adding one in the theotic group of integers, and that's kind of the, the smallest translation you can do. You generate the whole, you generate all the integers, and so the, all the integers are dense in the theotic group of integers. So you generate the whole thing. So this is a, a dense orbit. So you, you, the measure which you have is the Haar measure. So everything is very, very nice. And this is this phenomenon Kakodani system. So as an ergodic theorist, you see this, you have an interval map, an interval transformation map with countably many intervals. So the first, when you start here, you go here, and then you go uh, here, depending where you are, you start, you start, you have a, this is an ergodic transformation on the, uniquely ergodic transformation on the, on this Lebesgue space. And so it has, everything is understood. You have the eigenvalues. And so the eigenvalues are the dyadic rationals which is the proof of group, which is the dual group of the theotic integers. And that's how you can abstractly also just get the, 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 the system. So what you do is you have a ergodic system, you can look at the spectrum of the Koppmann operator and you can, if it is poor point spectrum, then it's a conjugated to a, a, a translation of a compact topological group. So that's something very, very fundamental in, uh, in, uh, uh, in ergodic theory. And so that happens here, and so this is a, a nice place where some important group, the Fiatic group of integers, appears naturally. And that's what I did in, uh, in my thesis, and I did it more generally for uh, 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 operators, where you just add a constant, so then you have a, 
spectrum on Julia set. This is also a spectrum on Julia set. This is kind of the case when, when you add zero and then you have the, the Julia set. This is kind of a, an integrable case where the, the Julia set is just an interval, one of the rare cases. Most cases it's a, a fractal, fractal space. But in this case, so that's kind of the, 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 the link between what we just talked about last time between these groups generated by some generators in an uh, automorphism group of a tree. And then you can see this as an example of an automorphism group of a tree and uh, uh, so generated by one transformation. And what happens is uh, you should think about this kind of tree at the boundary of the tree. At the boundary of the tree, there is this is the Tediatic group of integers. So it's a profinite group, it's a limit of finite groups and so that's kind of very very natural so that's the that's that's the story there and I actually have here kind of some mathematical code maybe I just displayed a little bit larger where you see how easy this is to implement on a computer algebra system it's recursively defined so you define if this is a and this is b what you do is your, your transformation flips a and b so b comes in the first place and then you apply t in the second place. And then you start with just a, an initial, you number the, the, the points on the boundary of a finite approximation, and then you uh, you see what happens. And that's actually what happens. So here there were 512 points, and this is this is the you see the you see the permutation which is induced on these 512 points. And this is kind of in the limit, it becomes this uh, for Neumann Kakutani system. So uh, uh, we have looked at the Grigorchuk and gupta sitki group, which were defined like that. And I, so I started to experiment now with uh, what happens in the case of the plane, two-dimensional plane. And so this is a slide from 2015, where uh, I kind of uh, I was still kind of already thinking about this. How do you do that? It's clear that you have not one transformation, but you have three transformations. And so what you have here, so what I suggested then is you can can go from a so you have three kind of different type of objects here so you have faces and then you have edges these are one dimensional objects and then you have uh, also uh, you have uh, vertices And that's what you see uh, here. So actually the vertices were here blue, blue there. But what happens is uh, when you restrict yourself to a one dimensional case, kind of, you should actually get this for Norman Kakutani system. So the picture here suggests the following. If you look at this picture here, it suggests that you have a, you have at every point, you can either apply T or S or U or T inverse S or inverse or U inverse. So I suggest to take three transformations uh, called T, S, U, and they are related. So what happens is that uh, like here, T square is not the identity, but T square is the identity when you rescale it. So T, T square is scaled is T. That's kind of a typical thing in renormalization. So you, 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 you apply the map twice, but you rescale to a smaller part and then what you get. So that's a typical uh, situation for renormalization. So you apply t twice, and you apply t twice, you are back here. So this tree, this branch of the tree stays the same, and then it's the same transformation. So that's what you also want here, but you have three, uh, uh, you, you, you want to come back after three. So when you come back after three and you apply, if you apply, if you, if you do t cubed, and you, you, you restrict yourself to, the, to this uh, third part, either the vertices, edges, or faces, then you should get the same, same, same thing. So that's, that's one of the things. And then there is a, there is a S which does it with the second branch, and the U which does it with the, with the third branch. So I've also implemented it here. Uh, the same story which is implemented here is just implemented uh, with kind of just with three transformations. And then you see the graphs. This is kind of just the U is kind of like, a, they are all like a Fonamon Kakutani type systems. 
but you, where you come back. So it's a three, three to one integral extension. I'm not yet sure whether it works, but this is just something I'm starting to think about. And, uh, but it's still interesting, this is a, this, this, if you take these three transformations, like the Grigorchuk group or the Kukta-Sitki group, what you get is uh, you have just a, a finitely generated group, which is probably not finitely presentable. I did not approve this, but probably not. But uh, uh, like the Kukta-Sitki, that might be difficult. And, uh, and, but you have, this, you have this group, but it's a non-abelian group. And what happens is if you look at the, the transformation on the boundary of this, of this tree, the boundary of this tree is the triadic integers, the p equal to three adic integers, which is also a compact topological group. And so, so you have then transformations there. So this is a non-abelian group, but in the limit, and that's the interesting thing, so in the limit, the T and S, the T and S don't commute, but the T and S commute in the limit. So that's a thing. And then you have always also, you can see T, S, U. <coughs> so if you take it, T, S, U is always equal to one. So you can, you can, you, it's almost the identity. So it's similar then in the Greek or Chuk group where you also have this kind of, uh, if you apply T and then S and then U, you get, you get, you get the identity universally. That's true for on, on every level, on every level of that tree, not only in the boundary, but it's only in the boundary that the T and S really kind of, that you have some, uh, an, an abelian, uh, abelian limit. So that's, that's very, very uh, interesting. And uh, the question is now, and that's I don't know yet how that is, whether then the corresponding Laplacian, if you take three transformations, so what you have three transformations, you take just six minus u t minus u t minus one, plus u s minus minus u s minus v, v u s minus one, minus u u minus u u minus one. So you expect that this this uh, operator in the limit is really giving you the has this spectrum here <coughs> and that's supported by some work of, or recent work of Grigor Chuk and other uh, mathematicians also who come from the from the uh, from this uh, uh, random uh, Schrodinger operator uh, uh, family so let me just say something uh, very quickly about uh, almost periodicity. So these are then the, the picture is kind of that you have at the at the at, at in the limit you have an almost periodic situation. Now almost periodicity is very very interesting. So almost periodicity is kind of an integrability situation where you understand things very well, and especially in ergodic theory, it's kind of the one part is almost periodic, that's the integrable part, then you have the random part, which is different. But then there are lots, there's a whole spectrum of different things between. It's like with the growth rate, which is exponential, or growth rate, which is, which is polynomial, then there's a lot of things between. There can be interesting stories. And also in the spectral theory, you have a lot of interesting things. So you have a, a periodic case, almost periodic case, and you have the random case, that you have a lot of also different things between. But the almost periodic case is very, very interesting and uh, 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 you can everything you can which you can look at in periodic situations, you can look at in uh, almost periodic situations. We looked at almost periodic lat uh, lattice gases or uh, cellular automata with Bert Hoff or uh, uh, with Evan Reed and almost periodic fluids, almost periodic differential geometry, whatever you can do on a donut you can also do on an almost periodic situation. Okay. Almost periodicity is a generalization of periodicity. And so it's a, it's a framework which allows you, it's a, it's a kind of a nice compactification of, of space. Not so much that you just add a point at infinity, but you have, you, you close the group of all translations. And then you, if you have a compact, compact space and you can look at the translation on this compact, <coughs> compact uh, space and so the, it's a group structure and you have an almost periodic situation. So that's what I kind of uh, I'm, 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 I'm maybe start to think about. I've still to wrap up the old story but that's something which I think it's, it's kind of have a foot in the story here which I still don't understand 
What is the spectrum here of this almost periodic? What is the spectrum of this uh, barycentric limit? Which is an exciting question. Okay, that's it for today.